Hey, so I recently made this short animation and in the process had to create dozens of photoreal clouds from scratch using geometry nodes in Blender. So I thought in this video, I'd share the whole process of creation from the geometry node system to how to correctly shade, render and comp clouds using cycles. Now, if you've ever tried playing around with clouds in Blender before, you probably ran into VDB files. These are clouds made in specialized softwares like Houdini, Embergen, Planetside or other software and then exported as .vdbs. They're a very solid option, but don't really give you any flexibility. First of all, you rely on other software or paid packs of VDBs. You can't really tweak them, can't find any stylized cloud. They're rarely ever animated and can also get very heavy. Now you can find a lot of tutorials in Blender, but the techniques used oftentimes fake the cloud using 2D cards, noise displacement, or rely on a lot of manual modeling but I needed the real deal, a fully procedural pipeline with artistic control to make any type of cloud I needed. I took a look at the underlying structure of Houdini's cloud generation pipeline and knew there had to be a way to make something similar in geometry nodes. So let me introduce Cloud Creator, a fully customizable procedural pipeline giving you a ton of flexibility with iterative cloud generation. Don't worry, you can find both a free and a paid version if you click the link in the description. The free version contains the converter, which allows you to take any mesh and transform it into a cloud, but with a few differences that will explore. Whilst Cloud Creator Pro comes with extra tools for cloud shaping, animation, shading, and adds extra cloud presets, but we'll anyway see the differences as we go. Now in Blender, to make a good cloud, you need nice shapes. This step is pretty easy. Just scatter some spheres around to make a rough shape. You don't need to be too detailed as long as it's vaguely cloud-like. The way Cloud Creator works is it takes any geometry you have and procedurally converts them into cloud using this converter node. But if you don't want to model the cloud by hand or want a more procedural approach, the Pro version uses this fully procedural generator node, making the whole process a streamlined two-step Step workflow. Cloud Creator Pro is fully compatible with the asset library so you can quickly drag and drop the modifiers in your file when you save the Cloud Creator Pro file in your asset library directory which you can find in your Blender settings but for this video I'll directly open the file that comes with Cloud Creator so that way you can follow along with the free version in which you'll see a template ready to render. Now let's take a look at the generator node. If you've ever tried making clouds in Houdini, you'll find the settings to be very similar as this generator is based on that same process. So if you select the cloud and go to the geometry nodes panel, you'll see three modifiers. Let's disable all of them except the first one for now and have a look at the generator, which will create for us the spheres that make up the cloud. The first settings are relatively basic, seed, length, width, and overall scale, which allow you to define the dimension of your cloud. Then you'll find more intricate settings like point separation, which is like your sphere density, distortion that distorts the base shape like so from the top down view, and this flatten bottom slider. You'll You'll notice there's no height setting and that's because vertical growth in a cloud is quite organic so to recreate that effect you'll need this displacement tab which adds little spheres using this iteration value and displaces them upwards with the spread option dictating how much it should displace them in all directions instead. There's also this cleanup factor which removes any stray spheres that will be far from the rest of the group so when you put it all the way to zero it will remove everything. The second tab is this children tab, which adds other smaller offsprings to your final cloud, giving it more details. You can set the density of spheres here and adjust their scale using the scale multiplier and repeat the operations using this value, although twice is usually more than enough. Now the very first setting actually allows you to pick from four different cloud presets for additional species of cloud, such as humulus, mediocris, Congestus and Fractus. You'll then be able to mix and match them to give you the perfect scene. But instead of generating the geometry, the Pro version also includes this generator curve, which allows you to draw the exact cloud you want. So very useful for specific shapes and trails of clouds. It's got the same settings as the cloud shape generator and also includes all the types of presets. 
Now, whether you model the cloud or are using the generator, it's not looking too fluffy at the moment, and that's when the main cloud creator node comes along and saves the day, the converter. The converter takes any geometry you have and converts it into a cloud. So if you're not using the generator, or have a custom shape like this Suzanne monkey head here, you can put it on and it will work like a charm. This node transforms your geometry into a nice volume by scattering tons of particles around, which you can visualize better by turning viewport override on or in your rendered view by looking at the volume direct path. The first setting is your resolution, which is basically your voxel size. Think of it as a pixel size, but for volumes. So the lower, the more detailed your cloud will be. And this is a good moment to save your files as low values can quickly crash your machine. With this modifier, I generally recommend typing in your values rather than using the sliders to avoid any unwanted crashes. The particle size is similar to the resolution, but will need individual adjustment for your preferred result depending on the resolution. Viewport override will display the points in a more readable way, making it pretty handy at this stage. And so as to not kill your PC, I also made this render subdivision parameter, which allows you to keep more details at render time, but please keep it low at two or three maximum, as the number of particles will very quickly get out of control. Now once again, we get a few tabs to help us in our journey. The first one being the noise, serving as a nice organic deformation. And with plenty of settings for you to adjust, similarly to your usual noise, you might need to play around a fair bit with these settings, so I'd recommend lowering your resolution for the moment to something a bit less intense for your cloud, fine tuning your settings in the meantime. The flatten tab is fairly straightforward and similar to the flatten bottom setting from the previous modifier with an intensity slider and a height parameter, zero being the bottom and one being the top. And there we go, your cloud is basically ready to go. Now the pro version includes a few more options that we should go through though, with the first one being an animation speed parameter that helps to bring a bit of life to your cloud like so. It's very subtle, but it really elevates the final result. You'll also notice three extra tabs in the pro version with wind, vortex, and camera culling. The wind tab allows you to create these trails that you would find in real life or the natural spread that happens at the base of clouds. The intensity is your general multiplier while scale and detail are just the noise pattern applied to that effect. The next settings are a bit more specific. With direction, you can think of these three inputs as X, Y, and Z directionality. So this will point towards positive X, whereas that will point to negative Y. You can even make the wind go in the Z axis if you want, and the omnidirectional tick box will allow you to make it go in both sides, so not just positive or negative. You can mix values to make it go diagonal, so what I usually do is put it to 1, 1, and 0, and tick omnidirectional on, so the wind helps the cloud spread nicely in all direction while staying flat. Then you have this Z padding slider, which adjusts the height at which this wind effect takes place. And finally, there's this flip Z tick box for the wind, which will flip the wind so that it happens only at the top of the cloud, not at the bottom. Like you can see in real life on these cumulonimbus clouds, the vortex tab is the last shaping option that comes with a pro version, which can be pretty useful for making stuff like in this image, or as a cool way to add some directionality in your clouds like you might see in these anime cloudscapes. To do that, add an empty, set a radius for the effect, an intensity to define the amount of spin, and a push for an extra clean result. And voila! Now that you've got a good looking cloud, your computer is probably crying, and that's because depending on your voxel size, it can be a lot to handle, especially for close-ups. So to optimize the scene and the clouds further, the last tab is a camera culling optimization option. So simply input your resolution, so in my case 1080 by 1920, and your focal length, which you can find in your camera tab. And now you can remove unwanted particles with this padding slider here. Once you're happy with your cloud, you have the option to bake the cloud as a still or as an animation. 
This can be very useful to avoid waiting for the geometry node's calculation, but the render subdivision option will not work with the bake, so make sure you're happy with what you see in the viewport. Now, to bake the cloud, you click on the converter modifier, go into your geometry nodes tab, and have a look at the very last node. Set it to animation or still, then press on bake, and your result is there. So the converter really is the central node to this tool, which is why I included it in the free version, and that's how I also made the other effects in the video. The trails coming from the plane were made by scattering spheres in geometry nodes, using a vertex mask and a simulation zone, and then converting them with Cloud Creator. As for the condensation effect, it was made following the basic principles of this aerodynamic tutorial by CG Matter, and then converting them to spheres, then into a volume, using Cloud Creator, with a few custom attributes for density and other effects. My very last tip on the modifier side of thing is, if you used an empty volume before adding the shape generator as the base for your cloud, you'll find this volume displace modifier, which can help you add some final distortion to your cloud. You can create a texture by clicking on new and clicking here. You can adjust the type of noise, the shape and the intensity, but make sure that the color is set to color and not grayscale, as a grayscale texture lead to displacement only in a single axis, whereas color will displace the cloud in all direction. So now that we have our cloud, it's time to make it look good. If you haven't already, switch to cycles. You can stick to EV and get very fast renders, but my goal is to make it look as good as possible. In EV, you can enable volumetric shadows and get a result like so, but I would argue the cycles result looks much more realistic. However, if you've ever tried to render clouds in cycles before, you might have encountered this teeny issue of insane render times, which might not be an issue to you if you're just rendering a still frame, but for animation, your PC will literally catch on fire. So what you can do to fight back is to go in this tab and reduce this max step settings to anywhere between 10 and 25. Basically, the smaller the number, the faster, but you might end up with these blocky artifacts if you go too low, so just be careful about that. Some people also change the step size, but that has created more issues than anything for me, so I wouldn't recommend touching that. If you can afford it, I would also up the volume light pass a bit. The higher, the nicer your volumes, but the slower the render time. Now, to make the cloud look realistic, I would say it's about 90% in the lighting and only 10% in the shader. And for the lighting, HDRIs are your best friend. These files will provide you a solid base lighting that will do most of the heavy lifting for you, with all the realistic details of a sky environment baked in them. Simply grab one from a website like HDRI Heaven and go to the World tab in your shader editor and plug it into an environment texture. The default Cloud Creator file will already have three three HDRIs I downloaded from HDRI Heaven for you to play around with, a daytime, an overcast, and a sunset one. Shader-wise, I've created this fast material for Cloud Creator, which looks very similar to the default volume scatter shader, but with a few tweaks to make it even better. It's very similar to what you may find in a lot of YouTube tutorials, however Cloud Creator Pro comes with the fast material and another fancy material, which comes with a ton of extra setting. It's got a top and a bottom color with a Z offset gradient, handy to make your cloud look stormy or reflecting the light of whatever's underneath it, as well as a billowy factor that adds this like puffiness to your cloud and noise, which you can fine tune with the different scale settings in the billowy parameters section. There's also this shadow setting, which allows you to control separately the amount of shadows inside of the cloud, almost like an ambient occlusion. Then you'll see this optional wind dispersion tab, which helps control the density of the volume if you've enabled the wind spread in the geometry nodes. You want to try to match this with the wind setting, and for that you can use the Z padding to change the height, the blur to diffuse it, and the intensity to make it less dense. And like in the geometry nodes, you can also flip the effect on the Z. 
And finally, there's this halation tab that helps mimic this fringing, rainbow-like effect you get sometimes around the very edges of clouds. The coverage dictates how much it wraps around the cloud, and the mix is like an intensity slider, whilst the color offset allows you to shift the hue of the fringing effect. Pushing the coverage to 1 is very much extreme, but putting it between 0.3 and 0.6 gives you a unique style that looks very pleasing. And there you go, you've got a fluffy cloud, although there is a final step, compositing. Now, you can choose whatever compositing software you want, even Blender's built-in compositing, Compositors, and you want to make sure that when rendering you enable the volume direct and indirect passes as these can be life-saving especially for adding more detail to the final image I'm not gonna be going too much into detail over the comp process as it would be a bit over this video's reach but generally speaking if you're doing your comp in an external software like Nuke or DaVinci Resolve I would recommend rendering in EXRs in this format you can check out this video that talks about the different types of file formats and why this format specifically might be the best. The link for it will be in the description and playing around with the overall softness of the image to get a natural look. You can see that adding volume direct and indirect passes really brings a lot of detail to your final image. Also, in order to drastically save on time when rendering animations specifically, you can render the clouds on their own layers separately. That way, you can render only every other frame, or even if the motion is subtle enough, every 3, 5, or even 10 frames if it's a still shot. Using the step setting under the frame range, and then creating in between frames in software like Flow Frames will fill the gaps and make it all look smooth. And that's what I did for many shots like this one, only rendering every 10 frames in this case, or every 2 frames in this shot because the camera motion was quite intense. So, so just to recap, with Cloud Creator Pro, you'll find the three modifiers compatible with the asset library, with the extra presets, animation, shaping, and wind features, and both of the shaders, as well as a template file with three realistic clouds and four stylized clouds, as well as two separate files for you to explore and see how the tool works in different environments. Cloud Creator Lite is completely and totally free and still comes with the standard converter node. So feel free to download either versions on Gumroad following the link in the description. I'll keep updating the tool with the feedback I receive. Feel free to send me any of your creations as always and let me know if you have any issues either in the comment section or on my Instagram. You can consider subscribing if you like what I do and I just wanted to thank everybody for the insane feedback on my previous felt tool. I've released a small Blender 4.5 update for the Pro version. Honestly, the stuff you people have created with FeltMaker is insane. I'm super happy to see many people doing such cool stuff with it. I'm super honored to be here. These videos take an insane amount of time to make, so I need to figure out a way to make them a bit faster. Maybe not always do a tool or something. Anyways, that's all I have for you. Thanks a lot. Bye.